Hey, what's up guys? This is Freaky Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this time I want to create some beautiful Elden Ring great runes with Cinema 4D's native particle engine. So you can see in the game Elden Ring, you get all kinds of cool runes. For example, this one Morgoth's rune has just some beautiful detail here. This one also has like a beautiful pattern from Radan's great rune. I especially like this one. But today we want to focus more on something like this one, the great rune of the unborn with this golden glowing particles and now it is time to show you what I created with Cinema 4D's particle engine. You can see we also have this beautiful glow, the gold particles and I just give it a little bit of my own twist but you can see that these runes also look quite powerful. All right. And of course, you can vary the look to achieve all kinds of different results. But I think that today I just want to show you how you can create this kind of complexity with Cinema 4D's native particle engine. So yes, without talking about it too much, let's just dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. I just have to mention that the full project breakdown with a length of 35 minutes will be on my Patreon. There you will also find a project file to download to just get an even deeper understanding. But now I would say let me just quickly go through it. And as I said, this is like a short breakdown and the full breakdown will be as always on my Patreon. But now let me just quickly talk a little bit about this project and I will move this one to the side. I have paused my redshift for now because otherwise my computer will just get too loud and it will not be a good recording. So the first thing that I have to mention for you guys is that to build that amount of complexity that you can see here, you need to think in separate components or systems or groups. All right. So for example, when I would deactivate these ones, then you can see I have a single particle system here with its own modifiers to just give me this outwards swirl on top of the other systems. So you can see this one is blowing particles outside. Then we have like a vortex here, which is going with a fast speed in the radial fashion here to give me beautiful motion blur and fast particles. Then there is another system with slower particles. All right. And let's just go through it step by step. This one for example is giving you this liquid look on top to get something like these areas here. You can see that it's like liquid gold flowing to the inside of your system and I think this is just a beautiful addition to the other systems. Also you can see for example some of these particles they flow really fast. Other ones they are a bit more slow and will give you more like a particle dust. But just remember to get a lot of complexity. It is a good idea to think in different systems and just build them on top of each other like in Photoshop when you put an additive layer on top and another layer and another layer just put the same mindset into Cinema 4D all right and you can see all kinds of different systems here this one again will be sucking particles to the inside let's just see this one this one is more like a dust field also with a liquid behavior but this one will give you more like a particle cloud moving in a radial fashion let's just see the last one here all right and this one is a special system where you could for example use like a thousand particles which are just bigger than your other ones to catch some special highlights with these ones let's also see the rest of the runes symbol all right this one is like a beautiful flame and this one has like a wind blowing these particles upwards and then I'm pretty sure there is something like a rotation in it we get some attraction towards the top to get this beautiful flame shape here we got some data mapping some color mapping some turbulence even more turbulence so yes quite a good mixture here let's see the next one Okay, this one is just another pattern, but basically it's using the same movement. I guess this one is just with a little bit more of the flocking. So you can see that probably in this one, you got a lot of cohesion to let them glue together to get something like these tendrils here. Let's see the next one. All right, this one is a little bit more loose. And let's see the last one is a little bit more with a liquid behavior. Okay, so this is how I built this whole system up. Of course, this was like a really short breakdown, but maybe let me just give you one more lesson here. So if you want to emit particles in an interesting fashion on your rune, then let's just start here with a donut. Let's get rid of all of the crap here. Control V, let's get rid of the borders. And let's just say that this one is your outer rune, your outer ring. All right, let's just make this one a little bit more dense. I would say 20 is enough here, but we can blow this one up to probably 600. All right, let's just do it like this. Then let me just go through 
through a simple process here of putting a vertex map onto our object, onto this ring. And we don't want to emit particles all the time. We want to emit, for example, something here and there and there, and this will change over time. So it is a good idea to put, for example, a random field into your vertex map. And there you go. You can go to remapping and probably we just want to clamp this one a little bit more. Let's see if we can clamp this one even more. All right, something like this one. We can uh, use a little bit more strength and do, for example, something like that. That is looking great. Let's just make this one bigger. NA to get rid of the lines, just to see this one better. Now let's put an animation speed of 50 into it. And now you can see that this is changing over time. This is great, but you can't use this one directly in your mesh emitter to emit particles only from there. You want to put the torus into your mesh emitter. Let's just put this one constant per frame to a thousand. Let's just see what's happening here. Okay, a lot of particles here. Let's put the speed to two, for example. But now you can see particles are born all the time from all areas. This is super boring. This is why we want to use this vertex map, but you can't use the vertex map directly here in the restriction. You need to turn this one first into a polygon selection. So let's put the polygon selection in it. Let's put the vertex map into the polygon selection. And finally, you will transfer the vertex map into a polygon selection for your torus. And now you can use this polygon selection in the restriction here. Let's just see what will happen. And now you can see that particles are born in a way more interesting pattern. And I know that from here, it is still quite a far way to come up to this complexity. But this is the basics of how to achieve it. And then you just need to have a good mixture of different modifiers in different groups. So I have in total 11 different particle groups with different modifiers. But yes, it will just take too long to talk about everything here. But I hope that this one is still inspiring you to build your own great rune. So just be sure to build a system on a system on a system to just build complexity up in layers like I did it here. And then it is really not that complicated to achieve an amazing complexity in your simulation. All right. So I hope that you learned something here. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.